Amen, my brethren. Uh, peace of the Lord to everyone. We're going to open the word of the Lord. In the book of Joshua. Joshua 1. Verse 11. Capítulo 2, verso 18. 1, 11. 1, 11. Amen. Amen. Listen, the word of the Lord. Joshua 1, verse 11. That's the text that is here in the projection. Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves, for within three days you will cross over this Jordan to go and to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Now, Joshua 2, verse 17, 18 says the following. So the man said to her, We will be blameless of this oath of yours, which you have made us swear, unless when we come into the land, you bind this line of scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you bring your father, your mother, your brothers, and all your father's household to your own home. Lord, we're thankful for this moment that we have enjoyed the fellowship and deliverance from the precious blood of Jesus. We ask once again that your word you may bless your people. We pray in the holy name of Jesus. Amen, my brethren. The book of Joshua it pictures the conquest of the land or the entrance, entrance on the promised land of the land of the promise. Uh, the land where it flows honey and milk, the nation that God has chosen for their, for his people to live, drink and eat and rest. And the word of the Lord says, my brethren, that Joshua, he gives an order so that the entire people would get ready. The entire people needed to get prepared. The whole people needed to be paying attention to the prophetic moment because it was a prophetic moment more than 40 years ago. For more than 40 years, they have been waiting for that moment from the moment in which they crossed the, the Red Sea and the time they spent in the desert and now, in the moment, the realization of that dream it was a moment where they would be, they would solidify on those days the project of God on the life of these people. And the Lord established three days so that the people would get ready. And one of the elements that was mentioned here on the Word was the food. And on those three days, the, they should never lack the food, the sustenance. And three is related to the time of the Father, the time of the Son, and the time of the Holy Spirit. And during those three days, three days during this time, the food was going to be very important because they could not lack food during this period so that nobody would faint or nobody would grow weaker or no one would, because of lack of food, not be able to give continuity to this order, to this plan and this project that God had revealed to his people through Joshua. And we know that the food that we should never, should never lack for us is the food that God provided for our lives. And the word says, and Jesus himself says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. So Jesus is that food. 
He is the one who sustains man and strengthens man and answers to man's needs and strengthens man so that man may give continuity to the project that he himself revealed to his people and to his church. The word says that during those days in which we are living, there was going to be scarcity, scarcity of this type of food. The Bible says not only of bread men will live off of, but of the word of God. But the Bible also said that on those days in which we are living, the food, which is the word of God, the revealed word, the revelation of the Holy Spirit will be scarce. The Lord said there will come a moment in which people will be uh, hungry of hearing the word of God. So this is the care in which Joshua was alerting the people. During these three days, you need to have full supplies of food. During this period you know, of three days, a period of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the conclusion of the project, the food, which is the Word of God, should not lack in our tables, should not lack, be lacking in our lives and our homes. And he says, provide us with food so that we may go beyond Jordan. So, my brother, in order to cross the Jordan, the food, which is the Word of God, needs to be present. The Jordan is the crossing from a period of mourning and suffering and anguish in order to enter into the Promised Land. Like the Word says, through servant Moses, the Lord is Son. The Lord gives you rest and brings you to this land. So the passing through the Jordan there is going to be departing a life of affliction, anguish, and suffering in order to experience the rest of the Lord, which He is our Lord and Savior. And in, you will find rest for your soul in the cross on the Jordan. You already crossed the Red Sea for 40 years. Now is crossing the Jordan River. And it is related to what? To the life that the Lord has for each one of us, the new life. The one who is in Christ is a new, has a new life. Everything has been made new. From that moment forward, it's a different moment. They needed to enter into the promised land, so they needed to be prepared for it. The church of our days needs to be ready for this, for this prophetic moment in which we are living. We have gone through the first day, that is, now is the day of the sun, and we, now we live in the third day, the day of the Holy Spirit. The moment in which we can take possession of the, pro the promised land, of the heavenly Jerusalem, a new heaven, a new earth. The Lord has prepared and promised for our lives. They waited for a long time so that that word would be fulfilled. My brethren, it's been a long time since the Lord has spoken to us, instructed His people and His church. He has prepared us for this moment that is going to take place at any time. It's going to take place in our midst. The moment of the crossing of Jordan, the moment in, of the entrance to the Promised Land. As everything is already organized and prepared. Joshua had already prepared the priests. Joshua had already prepared the Levi. The Ark of the Covenant was going ahead of the, the people. The Lord had given an order through Joshua so that the people look to the Ark and follow the Ark of the Covenant and be guided by the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant is what is the project of God. Where there is therefore uh, Aaron, the manna, the, the food that we just spoke about. So we saw that everything was prepared. So all the elements were, were there. And on this walk, in order for us to enter into the promised land, the Lord has already provided all things. We just need to look at the ark. We just need to look to the project. We need to look what God Himself revealed for, for our lives. The target was the ark. And what does the ark represent? It represents an alliance, a covenant between God and man. The ark, the project of God, the alliance is Christ Jesus. Jesus is our alliance. 
is the ark is placed in, in which is placed all the mysteries of God. And when we read the word of God, we find all these mysteries which are in the Lord, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So the church needs to be prepared. Israel needs to be prepared. And they got ready for this. The food, the priests, and the, the Levites. So in other words, so there was the sacrifice, there was the praise, the Psalms, the ark was present, everything was present. It was a moment of celebration, it was a moment, it was a feast for the people. But also at that time, it, it required people that the Lord wanted to rescue, the Lord still wanted to save some people. So Joshua sent the spies in order to rec to find the city because there was to spy on the city because there was an obstacle to reach the promised land that was still was still necessary for them to uh, defeat Jericho, the city Jericho. And Jericho was the opposite of Jerusalem. <coughs> Jerusalem is a promised land, and Jericho was a, a cursed land. So the curse needed to be exterminated so that in the people could enter where they could enter into the promised land, the land where pl flows honey and milk. So the kings of those the city, they become aware that the servants of God were there. The king of the city, he was not, he didn't fear the Lord. And we see very clearly today Jericho represents the world that's out there, that is under a sentence, uh, a curse, where the king of this world, the, the god of this world, there is no fear of the Lord, and their desire is to persecute and kill and destroy the people of God. And in that city, the king of that city wants to do this. He wanted to kill and destroy this the spies and the prophets of God. But there was a woman that had knowledge of the plan of the project of God. She heard about, and the Bible says that you faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. This woman edified her house on, on top of the, the wall. So it was a person that was undecided, a person that, that was inconsistent, a person that was divided between the world and God, and between the project of God and their own projects. A person that was on the wall, so that person would see on one side, could was able to see the side, the city, but also had knowledge of, of what was outside of the city, and of what was about to happen, which was exactly the entrance of the people of God to take possession of the promised land. She had already heard that, that she had heard the Lord uh, had allowed uh, the promise the, the Jewish people to cross the Red Sea. What God had done to Pharaoh in his his horsemen, she knew of, of, about all of all those things. And at this moment, my brethren, we can say that in the world there is great knowledge. They know what God is, who God is, and she speaks about the, the testimony of God. And she says, she said that the God of that people, the God of Jews, the God of the spies, the God of the servants of God. He is the Lord above uh, heaven and under the earth. She knew that all the power was given to God, and God had all the power upon heaven and on earth. And Jesus, at a certain point, says, is given, all power is given to me in heaven and earth. So she has all the knowledge. Maybe today you who are participating with us in the service may have all the knowledge. You know that the, servant, the people of God is going to enter the promised land. You know that the food for this time is the word of God, the revealed word. The people knows, the church knows that we cannot, should not lack the food in our home, in our tent, in our table, 
And we know that at any moment, those days are going to come to an end because the Lord has already determined it was an order from the Lord and the Bible says everything may, may disappear but the words of the Lord remain forever. So it was determined. The God determined that His people is going to enter into the promised land. So Jesus determined for the church that at any moment where he is, we will be as well. It is determined. It's a decree from God. It's an order from God that cannot be revoked. And the people knew that. They were ready. The church also know this at this moment. My brother and sister who are participating here with us. The church is ready. The church is prepared. The priest is to Levite. The Ark of the Covenant goes ahead. We have looked to it. We only look to Jesus author and finisher of our faith, who's our target, he's our objective. And a voice is speaking to us, this is the way, walk on it without going straight, either to the left or to the right. And the ark was like this, it was to guide so that the people would look to the ark and would be able to go through the same path. And the word of the Lord also has this same understanding. But at this moment also, it's a moment of salvation, a moment of definition. And that woman that was living on top of the wall, she needed to make a definition in her life, either God or Jericho. She had to choose between the blessing or curse, between life and death. There was no midterm. She had to, she had to choose one thing or the other. Her desire was to stay on top of the wall of Jericho. And many times we have this kind of desire. We like to remain undecided. I wanted to go to heaven, but I also want to participate in the things of Jericho. People like this. And that's how she lived. She had no commitment with anyone. There are people that don't want to have commitment with anything, even with God. And so at that moment, she needed to adopt a position. My brother and sister, you are par participating with this, with us in the service, me, each one of us, we need to make a definition in our lives. We need to take action. We need to make a stand. It is not possible to remain on the wall because the wall is going to crumble. That's the first thing that happened. The wall crumbled in the seat of Jericho and the people that were there they had not made a decision, they were the first to suffer the consequences. And the word of the Lord speaks about this because at that moment, that woman, she had an opportunity. God always gives an opportunity to man. God is a God of opportunity. The Bible says that before the difficulty, before the curse, the Lord came with His mercy, and that His mercy renew every morning. And that moment was a moment in which God was using two men. Two speaks about fellowship. If we walk in the light, in the same way that He is, we have fellowship with the bread, and the blood of Jesus purified us of all sin. And so at that moment, she had an opportunity of being in fellowship, fellowship with the people of God. And maybe today, my brother and sister, we are ha you are having this opportunity of being, participating of a fellowship, a fellowship that is related to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A fellowship that was paid with the great sacrifice of by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. So at that moment, she opened up her house and she received the spies of Joshua. And tonight, maybe uh, tonight you're using uh, uh, this electronic device, Zoom or YouTube, doesn't matter how you open up your house in order to receive the spies, to receive the servants of God in your, into your house. 
And the word says, my brethren, if you give a, a glass of cold water for one of uh, uh, servants, I will never remove your name from the book of life. So she received her, the servants of God into her house. And the Lord wants you to receive the servants of God into your house. But not only receive them, but that you may also make a covenant, an alliance, an agreement tonight. Because there was no longer time. Those men would never go again through that place. Because it was everything was decreed and established. The word says that if today you hear my voice, do not harden your heart. And that woman knew everything. And maybe you, you may know everything. You may know that Jesus is going to return, that God is God in heaven, that God is God on earth, that God is the God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, that's his name. You may know of everything that God has done in the past and the in the life of the people of Israel and what God does in the midst of the church. You may know everything, but you need to make a stand once again to make a decision. That was the last opportunity for Rahab. And today may be our last opportunity of making a covenant, an alliance, an agreement with this God. Because God is going to destroy this place. And the board says, my brethren, that that woman, when she received the spies, the king of Jericho went to her house. You know why? To destroy those men. And that's the, the care that we need to have. When, with the ones who accept Jesus as their only Lord and Savior, the King of this world, the enemy, he also goes. He's going to send. He's going to send his servants to try to kill, destroy, and eliminate the plan, the project of God that He wants to do today with your life. The word says, my brethren, that that woman, on that day, at that moment, she made a decision. And she needed, at that moment, she needed a sign. She needed a sign, something that would confirm that covenant, that alliance, and that agreement she had made. She needed, at that moment, in which she received those men into her house and delivered them from the, the enemies of the servants of God. She needed to have complete assurance that she was going to be saved, she was going to be spared. But not only her, but in her entire household would be saved. And Jesus in the New Testament would see a word that says the following, Believe in the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. You and your household. She didn't want to be saved alone. She wanted her whole household to be saved. But she needed a sign. She wanted to do at that day a pact and a covenant. The word says that she uh, made a covenant with those men. And tonight we are gathered to make the same covenant, this, the same alliance. And ask the, lo the Lord for this correct sign. I need to be sure that when the people of God enter into the promised land, I will also enter with the people of God and that I will not be destroyed, but, but that I will be saved. And the word says, my brethren, that those men, they said at that moment to that woman, look, the covenant that we established with you tonight. The church is also establishing a, past, a covenant with you, my brother and sister. And the correct sign that you that you have been seeking, you know, for you to have hope. The word says it was on that day was uh, a string of a scarlet. This scarlet string represents 
uh, the precious blood of Jesus, the string of scarlet, speak about the death and resurrection of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. And the servant of God told this woman, the covenant is, is the, the line of, of scarlet. The covenant of the Lord is salvation through Christ Jesus. Because the Lord saved the loved the world in such a way that he sent his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary so whoever believed in him may not perish but have eternal life and the only way for this woman to have to be saved was if she would preserve that covenant she kept that alliance if she was faithful to this covenant if she was faithful If she was faithful to what had been established, she could not change. My brother and sister, the precious blood of Jesus is immutable. The Bible says that salvation can only happen through the blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. If we do not recognize the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus, and we not preserve this sacrifice in our lives, in our hearts, we will not be saved. If she placed anything else on her window other than the line of scarlet, she would be destroyed. Why is that? Because the covenant would have been broken. My brother and sister, if you do not plead for the blood of Jesus, in order for your sins to be forgiven, you will not enter into the promised land. If you do not recognize the sacrifice of Jesus and put something else uh, in the place of the sac sacrifice of Jesus, you will not be saved. And the church has no longer any obligation. Your blood was not going to be upon the church. But if you want to be saved, you need to be faithful to this covenant, this alliance, the agreement the Lord has made with His servants. And the covenant is the line of scarlet on the window. The covenant is the precious blood of Jesus. And it says the following. You will put a line of scarlet cord in the window. And you put in your house your entire family. If the family is not in the house. And if the line of scarlet cord is not tied to the window. There is no covenant. My brother, if you are not in the house. In fellowship with the Lord. If in our home, in our family, is lacking the precious blood of Jesus, the line of scarlet, there is no agreement. It is not God who breaks the covenant, but man always breaks the covenant with God. When man changes the project of God, the covenant of the Lord is the line of scarlet. If you preserve the line of scarlet, you I will all be saved. If you not preserve it, we are not going to be saved. And that was the covenant at that day with that woman. And this is the same covenant that the Lord, once again, renewing our lives, the covenant of the blood, the covenant of the alliance, the covenant of the sacrifice. The Lord Jesus died and resurrected. He gave His life for you, for me, for each one of us. He paid a high price so that you and I, we may not be destroyed. But we cannot change the covenant. We cannot even change the color of the line. Sometimes we want to change the color. We want to put it like a blue line or green, make it look better. This doesn't exist. If the scarlet line was not in the window, she was going to be destroyed together with the people. If the Lord Jesus, if the blood of Jesus is not present in our lives, in my eyes, in my heart, in my home, the church will no longer have any obligation with you. God will no longer have any obligation to save you, to save me, to save us. The covenant, the alliance, the agreement is the line of scarlet. The covenant the Lord wants to make with you tonight is for you to ask for a sign. The Lord is giving you a sign. And that's the true sign. It's the precious blood of Jesus. Like it, what is written in the book of Revelations, and they overcame through the precious blood of Jesus and through the Word. 
were the ones who are wearing white garments, where they came from. They came from the Great Tribulation. They washed their garments and whited them out through the blood of the Lamb. That's why in the presence of the Lord, the ones who kept the covenant, like Ahab and his family, they entered and take possess, took possession of the promised land together with the people of God. And the desire of the Lord tonight is to make each one of us so that we may renew this covenant and this alliance so that we may also have enter into this new land and this new heaven that the Lord has prepared for our lives. The Lord has shown tonight through a spiritual gift a woman in her identity the, the photo was unrecognized, was unrecognized, was faded, not the photo of her ID. And the servant of God needs to have an identification. When we are on top of the wall, we lose our identity. We need to say yes or no. What goes beyond this does not come from the Lord. It comes from the enemy of our souls. So the servant of the Lord may not lose their identity. The mark of the, the blood and the Holy Spirit that give us an identity, like the song that the children sing. But tonight, the Lord was blessing this woman. She was causing her to understand that the precious blood of Jesus was going to be re restored, re restoring her life, spiritual life, making her, once again, a uh, a new vessel in his presence. Her ID would going to be clearly seen and they would be everyone would be able to say, This is a servant of God because she washed her garment and whited them out with the blood of Jesus, because she has kept the, the covenant with the Lord, which is the string of scarlet, which is the mark of the precious blood of Jesus in our lives. The Lord also showing in another revelation the church was going on the way. And they, the destiny was going to go, they are going to a river. And the church was going for a very long time. The church was able to arrive to the river. But there was an order for, from the Lord so that they should walk together and fast without getting distracted. But a few people would get distracted. They would start looking to their sides and they would be caught by surprise. And many would go straight from the path and would not get, were not able to get to the river. We need to look only to Jesus, author and finisher of our faith. A thousand are going to fall to, to your side and ten thousand to your right, but will never be affected. My brethren, we are walking through a moment of crossing. We are going to cross Jordan River at any moment, in a blink of an eye. The ones who have received Jesus in their lives and their hearts, if they are dead, they will resurrect. And if, you, if they are not dead, they are going to be jumping from this life to the next life. And this is a moment we need to remember this sign. The right sign is the mark of the blood, the precious blood of Jesus that gives us full fellowship with the Lord. And without it, without the blood of Jesus to clean up our sins, to restore our fellowship with God, we will not enter into eternity. I already mentioned this many times so that you may record this in your life without the blood of Jesus, without recognizing the sacrifice of Jesus, it's impossible for man to enter into the presence of God. That's why that woman at, at that day made that decision. She got out of, from the wall and she left the seat. She left her own per concerns and made a decision that saved her life and her household. And if you make tonight this decision, your life and your household, your house, are going to be blessed. Glory to God. Amen. So let's sing a song after.
Amém, glória a Deus. Amen. Glory to God. Get ready, O Israel, to meet your God. The people of God at the moment in which, uh, at that moment, they were ready. The word says that the water of the Jordan River, they went up high, but the people went through the river with dry foot. And the Ark of the Covenant guided them through that place. My brother and sister, get ready to meet with the Lord. This is a moment of decision. Get out from the top of the wall. Accept today the plan and the project of God. Make a covenant in an alliance, a covenant with God. With, with your life and with your household. Lord, we praise you. We thank you once again for this moment of fellowship, for the deliverance, Lord and our salvation through the precious blood of Jesus because we know that without it we would not enter in, into the heavenly gates glorify the Lord because it is present in our midst through the Holy Spirit that has guided us and spoken to us guided us and directed our lives Lord so that we may never go astray from the project that you have for each one of us bless us during this week protecting us, delivering us of any evil. Those who are sick, through the blood of Jesus, you may reproach any evil and any infirmity and cover us with the blood of Jesus so that no one else during this week may suffer any damage. Give us a blessing, a grace, and take us in peace. Give us your peace and your presence. Your Holy Spirit may, may be constant in our lives. Accept uh, this service of adoration to your name, we say in the name of Jesus. My brethren, the service is over. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit, be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord. Brother, you do as well. Thank you. Senhor, meus irmãos. A paz do Senhor, meus irmãos. A paz do Senhor. A paz do Senhor a todos. A paz do Senhor. Pastor. Pastor Sábado, a minha irmã se chama Marilânia.